This is the Electric XP, and it is a budget bike that does not have a suspension fork. We're gonna find out if we can put one on. I have to say that I don't know if this is actually going to work. I haven't installed a suspension fork on this specific model of bike, but it is a common request that we get because we sell forks like this on our website. There are enough people asking specifically about the electric XP that I'm going to try it. This could be a success and we have a nice air fork installed on the bike. This could be a disaster and doesn't work at all. There is no sponsor for this video. This electric XP is a bike that I paid for with my own money to do modifications like this and see what works and what doesn't work on this specific bike. I also did a review on this bike a few months back. You're welcome to go check that out. Uh, but I do want to take a moment to talk about the Bolton e-bikes podcast. But first, let's get to the fork. Is a fork swap something you can do yourself? Is it easy to do? And let me show you the tools that I have on hand that I may or may not need to get this swap done. It's not a difficult process in my opinion, especially if you've done it once or twice before, but if you have the right tools, it makes a world of a difference. If you don't have the right tools, it can be rather tricky. We are going to just loosen up what would normally be the stem area. Instead, we kind of have this big long extension here, but we're gonna pull this off and we're going to loosen the disc brake caliper. We're gonna pop that off, pull the fork off of the bike. Nothing special really needed for that part of the process. Now to put the fork on, we need what's called a star nut inside of this tube right here. That looks like this. This is a star nut setter. And then I also have a new headset, basically new bearings and everything to go on the new fork just in case it makes the install easier. And I also have this tubing cutter, which I'm probably gonna need. I find that often when we're converting folding bikes to a suspension fork like this, sometimes we have to cut the head tube of the fork down. And of course, a genuine park tool bicycle hammer that is well used and well loved. And already I can see that I'm gonna need one more tool to make this happen. Uh, and that is this closed loop right here. Uh, these are kind of annoying when they're on like that because the only way to get the cable out is to run it, fish it through, which means I actually have to pop this guy off and install a new crimp. And I'm gonna have to get a wrench for that nut on the back side of the fender here. I also forgot that this particular wheel is not a quick release, it's bolted on. So I need to grab a wrench for that too. Crimp, two wrenches, and hopefully that's it. I brought this specific eight, 10 millimeter wrench because these are always either eight or 10 millimeters, but not this one. Okay, front wheel is off, fender is off, headlight is off. Now time to remove the stem. So the best thing to do on this, which of course is another tool I didn't grab, so this tool list is getting much longer, is a six millimeter ball end wrench because the way these are designed, this is kind of in the way. So you need to be at a slight angle. So a ball end Allen wrench or hex head wrench allows you to be slightly off center or off to one side and it still works. And this one just isn't quite going to cut it. And that's really tight. <clears throat> Holy cow. That is a long bolt and it was really tight. So this is kind of a unique design. I haven't seen one quite like this. Most of the folding bikes that I've worked on have a different setup here. So I am cautiously optimistic about this whole thing working. I'm still not sure what's gonna happen. So normally what would happen at this point is the fork slides out because the stem is held on with usually a longer than average bolt down to the star nut pounded into the fork. Uh, and this whole thing comes out, but it won't because we have this on here. 
Uh, and if we pick up the fork and swivel it, you can see it turns back and forth. So I'm assuming we need a special tool that goes into these two notches right here, and we unscrew this, which means this might be a threaded fork. Uh, this could complicate things. Okay, so here's my idea to get this off. So I put two of those in there to give me something to grab onto, and then boom, untwist. Now we can pull this whole piece off. And here you can see that, yeah, this is a threaded fork, threaded headset, uh, which is totally different from what we've got. Let me, let me show you over here. Here's the suspension fork I was hoping to put on it. Uh, you can see no threads, threadless or no threads, whatever you want to call it. That is kind of the standard these days. The electric XP is an 899 bike. Uh, it is a budget bike for a reason. This is where you think, oh, well, it doesn't have a suspension fork. Well, I can always upgrade it later. Uh, well, maybe, because <laughs> this, uh, this does complicate things a little bit. I guess I'll keep trying. Well, it looks like this project is officially dead in the water. And some days that's how things go. When I put out videos about how to upgrade things, how to change a suspension fork, how to put different tires on tubeless, whatever it is, what you probably don't see, well, I know you don't see most of the time, is how many failures it took on some of these videos to get a success. I like it when things go smoothly, but that's not always what happens. Today is an interesting day because this is not actually the first video I had planned for the next YouTube video to come out. I had actually planned something else about batteries and a certain bike, and I had some new batteries come in. It was supposed to be made for a certain bike. I was gonna show you how to install it. It was gonna be awesome. Maybe go ride it around, do a massive range test. I went to put the battery on. Now, keep in mind, this is a bike that we have made for us. The battery is made by or supplied by the same manufacturer. So it's not like we're even trying to put aftermarket parts together and the battery didn't fit the bike. It wasn't correct. It looks like my suspension fork is not going to fit on the electric XP bike. And let me show you why. Before I started to go any further with taking things apart, I thought, you know what? I better check one thing on this fork. Bolton E-Bikes has a podcast. I am the host, and every Tuesday we release new episodes. Often we have guests from other e-bike companies. So if that's something you want to check out and know more about, make sure to go to ebikepodcast.com. Now I'm also mentioning it here on YouTube because I have been releasing some of those episodes to our research level technician members on the channel. So if you click that join button down below this video, you can join the membership. There's two levels currently. The 99 cent level is the lowest amount I could charge and that is for accessing the live chats on the regular live videos that we do, which I will be doing another live e-bike video review tomorrow on Friday. And yes, that will be another giveaway bike as well. And then if you pay the 9.99 membership level, that's when you get access to new products ahead of schedule. You get access to some of those podcasts live well before anyone else gets the recorded versions. So those are all things that you can check out if you want more content from Bolton e-bikes or you want it sooner than everyone else. Uh, so here's the fatal flaw as to why this won't work with the parts that I have. You see there's this tube and this slides down there. Seems simple enough. As long as the inner diameter of our replacement fork is the same, we can just do the same thing. And wouldn't you know, it doesn't fit. And it's not like a small amount where we could, you know, sand it down a little bit with some sandpaper and get it to squeeze in. It's a noticeable difference. There's, there's no way that's going in there. So if you want a suspension fork for an electric XP, to fit with the stock handlebar setup, that means you would have to find a threaded 20 inch fat bike fork designed for bolted on or quick release style of wheels. So unfortunately, I don't have a solution to fix this. Now, 
The easy way, I think, to do it would be you replace this entire assembly. So all of this hardware has to come off, a whole new headset's gonna be put on, and this stem extender handlebar piece would have to be completely replaced with one like we use on the uh, Crusader, the Avenger, some of those other models. But with what this bike has, it's not gonna work. Now that's not a piece that I have just lying around, unfortunately. Like I said, that's why this project is dead in the water. So unfortunately, it means I'm gonna have to just put the bike back together the way it was. And at least then the bike is a functional e-bike at that point, ready for future experimentation. This is the inverted fork for the Bolton e-bikes Blackbird. Currently, it is made by DNM. That is going to change soon because they can't make enough of them fast enough. But this is the version that's being shipped out on all of the current bikes. And I've had some questions about this particular fork. Obviously, there's a big difference in height between these two because this one was designed for a 20 inch fat tire and this is designed for a much larger 26. But besides that, this is the inverted design and this is the standard design that most of you are used to. Both of these are air forks and both of these have some adjustment. We have an air nozzle or a valve right here. If you unscrew this, uh, it looks like a typical Schrader valve. Ideally, you want to use a special fork pump to actually add air to this. Uh, basically, the difference is they can go up to higher pressures. As an example, the Blackbird fork takes 150 PSI, so that's pretty high. And with a smaller standard pump, what often happens is when you have a low volume of air under a very high pressure, when you go to pull your pump off, sometimes you get that little of air that shoots out when you pop it off. And sometimes you'll lose half of the air out of your fork if the adapter is not designed basically to not let any air out when you disconnect it. So that's why fork pumps are a little bit different and why they work a little bit better is because when you pump it up to 150 PSI and remove it, you're not gonna lose a bunch of air when it's disconnected. So you can adjust the air on this particular fork to change the compression, basically how hard or soft the fork feels. Uh, and you can do the same thing on the Blackbird fork. You just have a little cap right here and you've got the same type of Schrader valve underneath it. So on this side of the fork, inside is an air mechanism that can be adjusted. On this fork, you have an air mechanism on this side that can be adjusted. Now the opposite side of the fork does something different. Now, if you think about this as far as a vehicle or a car, often that's something people are more familiar with. Sometimes you have what they call a coil over shock, meaning that you have a piston, usually some type of fluid inside that makes the shock move up and down slowly. So it's not moving really quick. And then outside of that, you have a spring or a coil, which is over the shock. And the reason for doing that is if you just had the spring it'd be like a pogo stick, it would just bounce. You know, you'd hit a speed bump and your car would just go boing, boing, and obviously we don't want that to happen. You want it to absorb the bump and then smoothly come back. And so that's what the opposite side of the fork is for. It's gonna have oil in it. Now, this on this fork, this one has an actual lockout with adjustments in between. So inside of this oil piece, you have basically a valve. So when you're turning this, you're actually turning a piece inside and there's holes in that that are getting blocked or unblocked. So when the holes are all open, the oil can move freely up and down through the fork and you get your damping action. And if the holes are completely blocked and you turn it the other way, then the oil can't move at all. And that's how the fork actually locks. Now for this one, it doesn't have a lockout that just wasn't an option we could get on the fork and have it made in time. So what does this fork have instead? Well, on the bottom right here, this is our rebound adjustment. So it's a knob that twists back and forth much like this guy does, but it doesn't have a, a fully locked position. So it does change uh, the rebound 
how the fork moves back up and how quickly it does that, but there is not a lock out. Now, one of the questions we've also had is when people remove this axle right here, the oil side will actually extend out further if you let it than the air side will. Let me, let me explain this, this might be a little confusing. Uh, on this, if you change anything, remove anything, the axle, it doesn't change the length of these two pieces because this is one solid piece. But on this, this is a solid piece and then the part that extends are separated. So these two pieces can move independently. So same setup as this style of fork, but the way it's constructed, it operates very differently. Uh, but sometimes this confuses people because they're like, oh, I, I pulled the axle out and, and these aren't lined up. And I just want you to know that that's completely normal. Uh, the way these ones are designed, the air side is what limits the overall travel when the axle is in place. And when these aren't tied together like that, then yes, this can extend a little further than the other one. All you need to do is line them both up, slide that axle in, and that's good to go. So I am disappointed that this nice air fork will not fit on the electric XP bike, at least without further modifications, but sometimes that's how things go. If you're interested in more how-to videos on electric bikes, most of which do work out as planned, you can go check those out right here. Once again, thank you for watching Bolton e-bikes. Make sure to hit like, subscribe. I'll be back for another video.